Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in to Outdoor and Door Texan. Today I'll be showing y'all my recipe for an extremely spicy kimchi using ghost peppers and other chilies. And right off the bat, let me apologize to hardcore kimchi fans because this is not a complete traditional South Korean recipe. Instead, I took the traditional kimchi recipe steps and then adapted it to match what's more commonly available in my area and in my pantry. Also, I made some tweaks that better highlight the ultra hot spicy peppers that I grow in my garden. So for those of you who haven't heard of kimchi, kimchi is a South Korean staple made primarily of cabbage, salt, and spices. You put it all together in a pot or jar and then naturally pickle it down, sometimes for months, until it's softened to a texture and flavor of your liking. It has this fantastic sour, spicy, umami flavor that goes really well on so many things. Before getting started, make sure to check the description below for a detailed list of both ingredients and supplies necessary for this cook. We'll be starting out by cutting up our cabbage. Kimchi is made with what is known as a Napa or Chinese cabbage. They vary in size, but in peak season, they're usually the size of both of these. So that's why I'm using two. Take a knife and first quarter your cabbage. After quartering, then remove the hard white center at the bottom of each piece. Once the core is removed, either slice it into two inch long strips or cut the other direction for bite-sized chunks. This step is really a matter of preference for the end user. An important oh by the way is to make sure and save one or two of the outer big leaves because we'll be using those way at the end of this recipe. Once you have your cabbage cut to your liking, place everything into a large mixing bowl and slowly sprinkle in your quarter cup of kosher salt. Make sure to massage the salt into the leaves as you go. Now pour in just enough water to cover the cabbage and then weigh everything down with the plate to keep it submerged. We're going to let it soak in that salt water for two to six hours. Okay, it's been just over two hours and I'm happy with how soft the thick white stalks have gotten while soaking. We're now going to take the cabbage out and place it into a colander to drain. Also, it's important to note that you should save a cup of that brine for a later step in the recipe. Lightly spray everything down with water while it's in that colander. Then give everything a gentle squeeze to drain some of the liquid out, and then put it all back in the bowl and set it aside. We're now going to move on to our next step in the recipe, making the spicy paste. In a blender or food processor, we're going to add one tablespoon of grated ginger, six to eight cloves of garlic, I'm using pre-minced, but whole is fine because blender. Four to six tablespoons of dried red pepper flakes. I'm using dried chili pekins from my garden, but you can also use dried chipotle peppers if you want to add a little bit of smoke. Either way, this is my substitute for gochugaru, which would be in a traditional kimchi. That ingredient is sometimes hard to find here in Texas, and it's actually much milder than my substitute anyhow. To further my texification of this kimchi, I also add one tablespoon of fresh chili powder. This is dried and pulverized American Southwest red chilies, but any high-end brand of chili powder will suffice. Now I'm gonna add one teaspoon of dehydrated and crushed ghost peppers. And if you're looking for a recipe video on how to make dehydrated ghost peppers, click the link above. Now let's add the main event, four fresh ghost peppers from my garden. Ghost peppers are super hot chilies that land right around the 1 million mark for Scoville scale of spiciness. For reference, depending on variety of course, ghost peppers are usually 100 to 400 times spicier than jalapeno peppers. After the peppers, add two tablespoons of soy sauce or fish sauce if you're looking for something funkier. And finally, two teaspoons of sugar. Now give everything a thorough blend, and if you need to, feel free to add dashes of water until it comes together into a well blended paste. This is a great time to go over a quick warning about working with super hot chili peppers. Be careful not to hover your face over the container, try to avoid touching this paste with bare skin, and later when cleaning everything, do not use high pressure water or it will get in the air and destroy your lungs like pepper spray. With the paste ready to go, take your bowl of cabbage and add the final two ingredients, your prepped green onions and the matchstick carrots. Once you've got everything in the bowl, plop that hot lava on top, then grab some tongs and mix everything really well. Now with everything well mixed, use your tongs and pack a large mason jar with your kimchi mixture. Press down firmly as you go, making sure to get everything in as tightly as possible. 
This will release a good deal of liquid, which is vital in the upcoming fermentation process. Also, as you get close to being full, make sure to leave one to two inches of space at the top. If you need to, it's totally fine to use two jars if you have some leftovers that won't fit. Now remember how I said to hang on to a couple leaves way back at the beginning of the video? It's finally their time to shine. Take one or two outer leaves and wedge them tightly into the jar, pressing down over the kimchi mixture. This will essentially ensure that nothing floats up to the surface to be exposed to air, which causes mold, which makes kimchi gross. With everything packed in tightly, take a dash of water or that brine you made sure to hang on to from earlier and add just enough water where there's no solids exposed to air. Oxygen is our enemy. Kimchi can't break down and ferment to taste delicious without being completely submerged in liquid. So be extra careful here to make sure there aren't any bits poking out. With that done, let's talk about fermentation gear. During that natural lacto-fermentation pickling process, which is what this is called, good bacteria grows in the kimchi feeding off of sugar, breaking down the cellular walls of the ingredients. This is what creates that fantastic sour flavor. A byproduct of that process though is the buildup of gases which will start to bubble up after a couple of days. If you don't do anything about your sealed jar that's fermenting away, it'll eventually build up enough gas that it very well may explode. The easiest way to keep that from happening? Use a regular mason jar to lid and open the jar daily to burp out that gas. If you want something a little more hands off, you can also use these pickling pipes. They allow the gas to release but also nothing to come back in. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description where you can find these lids on Amazon or peruse around for similar items. Either way, wipe off the rim of your jar before putting on any lids. And once you've closed it up, put that jar in some type of pan just in case there's any spillage during the pickling process. Now place your jar in a cool, dark place and let it sit for anywhere between four days to a couple weeks. As you check on it, you'll see bubbles forming and the pickling process takes shape over time. If this is your first go around with kimchi at home, I'd suggest pickling it for five days, then pulling it out to see how you like the overall flavor and crunch from there. It's really a matter of preference, but the longer it sits, the softer the veg will get and the milder the spicy notes. But on the other hand, the overall flavor will get much more rounded. There's a happy middle ground somewhere in there. I can't show you all the particular jar we put together as it's still fermenting away in my pantry, but here's an example from my last batch of this exact same recipe. This kimchi fermented for one week and still had a great snap to the bite and a freight train of heat when it comes to flavor. Tasting this kimchi, there's a pronounced sourness that snaps your palate at first, which then opens up to a rounder umami kind of flavor. And then here comes the hot. And wow, it's a lot of hot. I had pellets of sweat prickling up all over my head and there was what felt like a buzzing that started in the back of my brain. It literally felt like someone was just turning the thermostat up and up until I was sitting in a sauna. What's interesting though is that there wasn't any lit cigarette on your tongue kind of hot pain, just simply a ton of heat everywhere. Long story short, I loved it. It's an acquired taste, I know, but if spicy is your thing, this recipe is a must try. That'll do it for this recipe and thank y'all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you have anything to add to the conversation. I always try to be available to my viewers, so don't be shy in leaving a quick question. If you're new to the channel, I hope I've been helpful in sharing my perspective, and please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more great content to come. Alright y'all, take care.